any business takes blood, sweat and tears to get off the ground. It takes serious amounts of dedication. It takes serious amounts of focus. It takes the highs and the lows because the lows are what make you grow to be able to appreciate the highs, but also get through that whole journey. What if you had the opportunity to have a coffee with your eight-year-old self? What advice would you offer? And would you actually take the advice and offer? I'm absolutely fascinated by that question. I interview people from all walks of life, from Heineken Cup winners, New York Times bestselling authors, local taxi man, you name them, I've interviewed them. Be inspired, learn and grow from the experience of others. Welcome to the What I Know Now podcast with Mark Kelly. So my guest today is Paul Allison. Paul is famous for being a high performance sailing consultant and actually then making the transition to the business world. I'm absolutely delighted to have you on the show. It's like we've met before. Yeah, absolutely, Mark. <laughs> absolutely. Well, listen, thanks so much for having me on here. So tell me a little bit about your journey to now. Well, I tell you, it's been an incredible journey. And I think life is all about the journey, right? And, sure you is. know, if you had, if I rewound even 10 years from now and you said, that Paul, what you'd be doing now is you'd be working as a sales performance coach and going into companies and helping their sales teams grow and develop and really helping them fulfill their full uh, their full potential and growing their business and then being you know uh, flown all over the world to to go and speak to at various conferences. I'd be like, no way, you're crazy. I'm a professional sailor and that's what I do, and that's what I was. 10 years ago, I'd spent 22 years professionally sailing um, around the world's oceans, uh, working with high performance racing teams and also privately for different owners running their um, very posh and fancy yachts and sailing them all over the place. I had this moment back in Dunleary um, about 10 years ago where um, a very good friend of mine, a guy called Pat Rigney, who's a, who's a lovely guy. I was with Pat and we were meant to be going racing that night in Dunleary on the Thursday night racing series and um, it was blown off. The weather was wild and there was no way that it was going to happen. And so I said to Audrey, like, Audrey, do, do you know what? Go and grab a bottle of Mount Gay rum and some coke and we'll go down to Pat and Denise on their boat and uh, we'll just have a couple of rum and cokes because they ain't. there's no way we'll be going anywhere this evening. Um, and so we went down to Pat's boat, down into Dunleary Marina. I remember sitting down there, pouring the rum and having the coke and we had great chats. And then Pat gave me an opportunity at that moment that really shifted my life to a whole new level. It opened up a door that I, that I never saw coming. I had no idea that it was my path. And yet it's just been incredible, it, absolutely incredible. And the opportunity that Pat gave me was he said, Paul, he said, you know what? He said, in a couple of weeks, I need a, I, I, I need a speaker to come in and speak to my sales team. And um, I don't have anyone and I'd love you to come in and, you know, just talk about crossing the Atlantic or something like that. So I was, you know, just said, yeah, no problem. So anyway, fast forward two weeks, walk into the Beacon Hotel, but there's 25 faces looking back at me. And I can remember in that moment thinking, God, how on earth did I get here? And bloody hell, you know, what am I going to speak about? Now I had a plan and I totally had a plan and up went the slides on the board and I was talking about a trip that I did sailing across the Atlantic. And we went through a bit of rough weather on that particular trip. And so I talked about a storm that we went through and I gave it a bit of artistic spin and a bit of artistic license. And we ended up with a whole room, we're on the edge of their seats and they're thinking like, oh my God, you know, well, he's gotta be alive because he's here in front of us, what's going on? And I suddenly stopped in my tracks and I can't tell you why I did this, I couldn't tell you, it was like a, it's like a force from above just freaking hit me and made it happen. And I just went, holy crap guys. And they all looked at me and I said, I've just realized something long dramatic pause and they go i go you know what this storm that i went through is no different from the storm financially we're all going through in ireland today so this was back in 2008 2009 in ireland so the place was shutting down the imf was in vincent brown was raging out the whole thing is going nuts yeah and the reality was is that suddenly i realized that actually the storm that I went through was no different to this company. I said, I hope you realize that although we had different people on the yacht, and we all had different positions. We were all in the same yacht, AKA your business. And you know what? We can't control the weather. Whatever we do, no matter how much we get frustrated, no matter how much we try and control it, we can't do anything about the weather. So we have to just run with it. We have to be able to, you know, focus on what we can control, which of course is our strategy in business. It's our strategy. AKA on a yacht, it's your course. So therefore, do you take your sail in, reef in, talk to each other, work really hard as a team and, you know, look where the competition is and start to make decisions based on that. 
And so what happened was, was after that uh, particular uh, session, uh, Pat came up to me and said, Pat, uh, uh, Paulie said, listen, I've been in business for a long time. He said, I've seen a lot of you guys. You know, he's seen a lot of people coming in, motivating teams, doing all this. He said, I said, you know, he said to me, he said, I genuinely mean this. He said, I have never seen anything quite so, uh, quite so relatable, special. You just really made a difference there. He said, I've never seen anyone like you. And he goes, could you work with this sales team for the next six to six to 12 months? and really support them through this whole storm that's now unleashing in Ireland, financial storm that of course went through the whole world too. And I just did the Richard Branson on it, which is say yes and worry about it later. Yeah, so good, good strategy. Problem, no problem. And then so walked out the beak and go, what have I just agreed to? Oh, suddenly feeling way out of my comfort zone, way out of my depth. And so I just went to work. I was like, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna make it happen. Um, I went in, I, st- I, I delivered this sales program to these guys and the business grew by 26% when everything else was melting down in Ireland. Now, I was very lucky there because Pat then sits on the board of other Irish businesses. And of course, did they all need help? Yes. And of course, Pat said, I know this guy. I know this guy. The He's power right. power of recommendation and referrals. Absolutely. And then the next thing then, I was up in Dundalk working with businesses up there. I was in, you know, in Dublin, other places, and it just went... Psh, 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 And it all just went, suddenly I've got the sailing school that's flying. I've got this whole new speaking career that, you know, just arrived on my doorstep. Um, And then in the midst of all of that, Eddie Jordan arrives on the phone. Eddie Jordan. Wow. Talk about random. Saying, saying, um, listen, I'm building this yacht. I've heard you and your wife are the team that should be taking it around the world for me. So I want you to drop everything for three years don't worry about your businesses. You can reestablish those later and come away with us and sail around the world with me for three years. Wow. Now, in that moment, I was like, well, can I think about it? Because uh, because the whole Richard Branson strategy in that moment didn't totally kick in because any business takes blood, sweat and tears to get off the ground. It takes serious amounts of dedication. It takes serious amounts of focus. It takes the highs and the lows because the lows are what make you grow to be able to appreciate the highs, but also get through that whole journey. Painful at the time though. Painful at the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah find, it, find it there. But actually that's the bit where the universe is just helping us grow as, as individuals. So then, um, so then I can remember very clearly making the decision with Audrey where actually it was like, you know what? It feels it feels like the right thing to do. And actually more importantly, I knew that it was something we had to do because I knew that the content that I'd be able to learn or the things I've had to experience, both of us, not just as a couple, but also, you know, me as a person that then I could bring back into business once we'd done this round the world trip. Yeah. And so we went off and we did this trip and it was incredible on all levels, you know, on not just working with some of the best in the world who were Eddie's pals and guests who came on board the boat, but working with Eddie himself, he's an incredible guy. Um, uh, but also then to sitting in a remote little island with somebody going, hey, Paul, the secret to life is dead simple. Just focus on being happy. Focus on what arrives on the beach. That's all we do here. He said, it's never. And you know what I thought? There's always something you hear in businesses and corporates. You hear, well, we would do that, but you know, we haven't got the resources, haven't got the resources. And I always flick back to this guy on this beach. And I remember watching the sun go down of the beautiful blue ocean. And I remember him going, yeah, but you know, we just, whatever arrives on the beach, we use it. And I re- and then I flicked back to another quote that I love, which is that, you know what? It's never a lack of resources, just a lack of resourcefulness. Yeah, that's, that's very, very good. So you've opened up about 50 different questions there that I could possibly oh, go, oh, go with yeah. it. Let, yeah. Let's go back to that island now. It sounds really, really good because it's all coming yeah. to winter here. So what have you learned about mindset then? And how, how can people have a growth mindset or a fixed mindset? Because it is resourcefulness. It's how yeah. people learn to grow and develop and ultimately look at those challenges as a way to actually make people better and better. What have yeah. you learned about that? Well, mindset, it really, you know, from, from, from working with some of the best in the world. And also, you know, I kind of started asking myself a question which is, you know, what really makes the difference between somebody who's like ultra successful, who, you know, the guy or the girl that just lands on their feet. They seem to land on their feet, whatever life throws at them. They're massively successful in business and their relationships. You know, and right back in the beginning, I said, ah, they're just lucky. 
You know, it's so easy to, to dismiss people or kind of hold that belief. And I realized that really it comes down to their mindset. And the core of it is, and I, I kind of can't, I'll try and show you on the screen here, is a summit that I call the success cycle, which is uh, a cycle and it's got four boxes. So if you just imagine four boxes in front of you and on the top left box, you've got potential. And my question to you is, what do you believe is is the potential of any human being on the planet? Now, I can ask that to audiences of up to a thousand people and we'll all, always all come back to the same answer, which is unlimited. So then my next question is, OK, so if so, so if we've all agreed that people's potential is unlimited, are there many people on the planet that aren't getting the results that they want? Yes or no? And they'll all yes. go, totally true. <laughs> and, so, and, then so, and then so I go, well, why? Why is that? Because in those four boxes on the bottom right, let's get me right. Hopefully you can visualize this if you're driving in your car. Um, but if not, we can send you a cheat sheet, I'm sure. So in uh, the bottom right, you see you see results. And so for you to go from potential to result, you've got to take some form of action, right? Now, that's yep. half of the cycle. So so you've got potential action result. Now, here's the thing. We're always getting a result. Now, it might not be the result that you want, but you're always getting a result. What does your body look like? What do your finances look like? What do your relationships look like? We're always getting results. So here's the thing. What's the core belief? Because many people say, well, just take massive action, take massive action, take massive action. And that's true. However, it doesn't always work. Because if you're running, I think Tony Robbins says this, if you're running east looking for a sunset, you're never going to find it because it's not the right you, if you If you're sailing that ship, you're going to go off the side of the planet, right? It's just going to go off in a completely different way because you've gone the wrong way. That's right, exactly. So, um, so, so there's another piece to the puzzle, and it's the piece of the puzzle that is critical that I've learned about mindset, and that is beliefs. Now, you'll have heard this everywhere, and it's true. What you believe, Henry Ford said it. He said, what you believe you can or you can't, you're right. 100%. So how do you get into that mindset or how do you, because let's say you're on you're on that boat and it can be a little bit lonely, isolating, you got the weather against you, it could be bleak. How do you get yourself into that state where a lot of things are actually compounding to mean that you're probably in a more of a negative state or that reptilian brain is yes. kicking in and it's a lot more kind of like fight or flight. How, how do you prime yourself to get into that area? You need to do what professional athletes do, which is they run the race before in their head. Meaning that if that if you um, if you spoke to Andre Agassi, and he, and he said the first time he won Wimbledon was you know a massive deal, but he had won it thirty thousand times before in his head. Yeah, he had already run it. So 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 the way to override the belief cycle is literally you get the result in the advance in your head because our brains don't know the difference between something that is real or vividly imagined. Love it it. doesn't make the difference. And the way that they and the way that they proved this um, is uh, they did a sports science uh, survey of where they were looking at uh, Olympic athletes and they wired them up, you know, they got all the wires over them and they got them to run the race first in their head. And what was amazing was all the whole neurology fired meaning all the messages went down to the muscles as though they were really running the race. And that's why now, if you look at professional athletes, they'll tell you, you know, it's all about visualization, 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 visualize what you want. Now, that's not a case of, you know, using, you know, of course, buzzword law of attraction. I'm a big fan of uh, the the law of get off your ass and take action yeah. as well as the law of attraction. <clears throat> But the point is, is this is this is tuning your head into what you want. It's towards motivation. Yeah. What about some people that visualize just getting a day's pay and just getting home and having a beer and that's their that's their visualization? Can that be changed? Can they turn those limited beliefs or those small minded uh, goals into something bigger? Totally, of course they can. And I think you know, it's one of these things. Is you know, once you realize that you are really the master of your own destiny, one like. Once you realize that and you realize that actually tuning your head in is so important because because the reality is, is that if you don't run your own mindset, a clever marketeer will get in and do it for you. All of us have to have something to move towards. We have to have a compelling vision, something bigger than ourselves. If we think that uh, fast forward into the future, our life is going to get worse, we're going to feel crap in the moment. Of course we are. Yeah. We're like, well, can we stick in the moment? Whereas if we can see it getting better, if we can see it, you know, somehow, and, and this is where people go wrong, right? 
people go wrong because because as soon as they set the goal, the next question they ask themselves in their head is, well, how? How do I do that, Paul? How do I become number one um, in uh, in my business? How do I become the number one tennis player? How do I become the number one career recruiter? And if they get in the how, the how blocks them. 100%. Because actually, you, you know, you start going, well, how, how, how? And it just blocks you. Whereas actually, what all they've needed to understand is, if you look at the word how, H-O-W, they they just realize that actually you just need to be a little bit Lex Disclick, yeah. meaning... <laughs> Rearrange the letters and if and you get the word who. Yeah. And the real question is, who do I need to become? It's about getting your head into that place because you know, we you know, we we all have whether our vision be conscious or unconscious, we all have an unconscious vision of where we're gonna go. Hope you enjoyed the first part of Paul Adamson's fascinating podcast. There's still plenty more brilliant insights from Paul to come, so stay tuned for part two. You'll find part two on Wiccan.co or iTunes or your Android podcast of choice coming very, very shortly. 